Hello and welcome to this very first Vina Wonderland video. My name is Jess, um, that's all you really need to know. Uh, Join me on my along the way today is my darling wife Linda. Um, I'll be honest, this is not the introduction I was hoping to make, but none of that matters anyway, because today, today we are going to the Museum of Applied Arts here in Vienna, also known as the MAC. So come on, it's time for a wander. <laughs> The first thing you'll notice when you come into the museum are the huge and beautiful ceilings. They smash you in the face. They're an assault on the eyeballs and well worth it. If the vast spaces all around don't set your senses a tingle, then check out the sofa. Created by artist group Gelatin, this huge sofa is nearly 5 meters in length and over 2 meters high. Still, with probably being a feature right now, you're not able to enjoy the couch and get a little Freudian psychoanalysis. From the couch to the first of the museum's permanent collections. Known simply as Vienna 1900, the museum boasts a huge collection of objects that were in local homes at the turn of the 20th century, and it's a vast and varied array like this wonderful guest room, complete as it was in 1900. The museum's collection boasts an interesting array of objects, from this beautiful tea set to this absolutely exquisite glass figurine. It's just so happy, and if I recall correctly, dates from around the 1930s to 40s. Around the museum's many collections, you'll find the odd item that is out of place, like this cat and apple mouse. This is part of a collection known as Bold and Free, and you'll find little tiny things like this all around the museum, like a vacuum cleaner in the rug room. Moving on we enter the first of the museum's temporary exhibits. Featuring the work of Austrian architect Adolf Loos, the museum had on display models of Loos buildings, all made by the students of Vienna's Technical University. Loos was born in Brno in 1870, and is one of the pioneers of European modern architecture. Lowe's railed against the lavish style and ornate features found in many Viennese buildings. Instead, he used smooth and clear surfaces on the outside, while on the inside he would focus on natural patterns and finishes. Lowe's work was not always widely appreciated amongst his contemporaries. In fact, they often derided his work entirely. Even the Kaiser was said to exit the Hofburg by any other gate than one that faced one of Lowe's own buildings. Yet today, from Vienna to Switzerland to the Czech Republic, Lowe's work is seen as visionary. It's iconic. And it's still thoroughly modern, even 100 years after its creation. Lowe's passed away in 1933. He was just 62 years old. His health had been failing for some time, he was already suffering from dementia and a few months before his death had suffered a stroke. However, his work still lives on.
From architecture, we move on to sculpture. And right now, the Mac is home to an amazing solo exhibition by American artist Sheila Hicks. Entitled Thread, Trees and River, the whole exhibition is a wondrous sight of items made up from threads, from wools, from textiles. It's all surreal and beautiful and thought-provoking at the same time. Alongside Sheila Hicks's own exhibits are items from the Mac's own collection of textiles and carpets. But one of the most wondrous sights and the biggest item on display is this fantastically huge pile of wool. Well, balls. They look like pillows, they're netted up just to look perfect and they look incredibly inviting to jump on. Um, you've just got to look actually at Linda who is very, very excited at the sight of this giant comforting pile of pillows. I mean, who doesn't want to make a fort out of that? Some of the items are so organic in shape. I mean, this, if it doesn't make you think of dreadlocks, I don't know what does. But then by comparison, other items are so sleek and not it. This, this particular item I, I really liked. It's so beautifully crafted and weaved, or woven, my apologies, <laughs> and yet so wonderfully displayed. The exhibit is only there until the 18th of April 2021 and if you don't have a chance to come across and see it live, go to the Mac website and you'll find a full 3D tour available for you to enjoy. We'll put the uh, link in the description below. From the temporary to the permanent and my personal favourite exhibit of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the Asia Collection. Now the Mac has one of Europe's most important Asia collections. These, these are items you would find in everyday use. And here we find items, bowls, vases from all over Asia, from China to Japan to Korea. These are all items that were found and collected over 150 years. Now the unique way they're displayed is down to um, Japanese artist Tadashi Kawamata. He wanted to get the items out of their glass cabinets and on displays in unique and interesting ways which is why you'll notice marker pen written on glass um, it's kind of weird in Bellet, the whole exhibit space is designed to be ripped apart and redecorated every two years it's meant to be temporary and the artist said he could never really imagine one of his items of work ever being finished and it's clear here there's marker pen, unfinished bits of board, and the whole thing feels not together, but in a kind of cool way. If you're looking for, you know, interesting items from all over Asia, the Max collection is, well, it's up there with the best. All too soon, Time began to get away from us and we decided to try and catch the last of the exhibits and this one was really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the 100 Best Posters 19. So these posters are found all around Switzerland, Germany and Austria and they are fascinating. From, well it's hard to describe a lot of them from honest and there were a few that we, well, we couldn't actually take a picture of. But the design concepts and the way they're laid out is fantastic. It's a really cool exhibit and if you want to catch this, this will be there until the 2nd of May 2021. Go take a look, this is actually a really cool exhibit and I guarantee you'll find something that will excite and shock in equal me measure.
Well, time was running out and we had chance just to hit up one more exhibit. And this time it was the Baroque exhibit. Now I will, I could make a joke about something being Baroque and something needing fixing, but I won't. Other than to point out these fabulous ceilings, it, the Baroque period, at least in Vienna, seems to be purely about opulence. And you will find nothing as opulent as the ceiling anywhere. I mean, this doesn't just feel like how the other half live. This is pure splendor for splendor's sake. I mean, take a look at this room. There is so much gold and craft and, well, it's just over the top to the max. I really did like this table as well. The intricate marquetry, the details, it was a little trippy and wonderful at the same time. And then there was this door. Now, doors are large things, and then is quite short, but take a look at how tall. Apparently, in the Baroque period, people were much taller. Now, this cabinet, I, I spent a little while looking at this cabinet because the detail in every figure, in every inlay, was just superb and so over the top. Finally, with stomachs grumbling, we had chance to hit up one last place, and that, of course, is the shop. Now, I love a little shop, and this is a wonderful little shop. Do check it out if you're there. Getting to the Mac is fairly simple. You can take the U-Bahn Line U3 to Stubento, the U4 Line to Landstrasse Bahnhof Wien Mieter, or the number 2 tram, buses 3A and 74A also call there. The cost of admission is 14 euros, which is fairly reasonable. However, we used our Niederösterreich cards, which gave us free entry on the day. If you are visiting a lot of sites in uh, Vienna and the surroundings, check out the Niederösterreich card. Uh, we think they're really neat. Finally, one of the really cool things we loved about the uh, Mac Museum is they have their own iPhone and Android app. This multimedia app acts as a guide to show you around the museum and is completely free to download. Finally, we have to say a huge thank you to the uh, team at the Mac who kindly gave us permission to uh, do the filming there. We hope you really enjoyed this video, or if not really enjoyed, moderately enjoyed. Actually, we just hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please remember to like and subscribe this for this channel. This is our first time we've ever done anything like this and we're hoping to do a lot more. So, uh, what did they say? Smash that like button and do subscribe and uh, we'll put all the details for today's trip in the description below. Thanks for watching. Take care.